I'm so excited to see you again. Hi. We got to hang out on the blue carpet. Yes, last night. <laughs> yes. It was very exciting. I, you guys had a very long line of press and media here at the Bentonville Film Festival. Mm-hmm. So um, you guys had to have keep up your energy. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, <laughs> fly in from somewhere like day of yesterday? I have flew to in go? from Los Angeles yesterday. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. I've made the LA flight. It can be tedious. <laughs> you get stuck anywhere in between. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, it was a very smooth flight. Good, good. Well, thank you for coming to the tribe table today. We're going to have an awesome conversation about a movie that I hear awesome things about. Yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about Unlovable. Unlovable. Um, I was um, one of the writers and I started in it with John Hawks and Melissa Leo. Okay. It was directed by Susie Unessi and it's a Duplass Brothers production. Um, It's a story of a sex and love addicted woman who learns what real intimacy is Mm -hmm. um, through playing music with a reclusive man. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's a dramedy based on my personal experiences with sex and love addiction and recovery. Um, And it's kind of a little musical. We've got original music by John Hawks and we're two awesome characters playing music in a, a garage. That's awesome. So it's fiction based on real life. Yes. And which I think most fiction has got sure. some real life yeah, going yeah, on yeah, yeah. in it. Good, good. Sure. Well, one of the things, and we just talked briefly um, on the blue carpet, but one of the things that um, you said is this this journey mm-hmm. and the unlovable part of that, um, really the core of that being some self-love mm-hmm. that needs to occur. So yeah. tell us about that. Tell us about that journey. And I know this is going to be a mix of the movie yeah, and yeah. your personal experiences. Yeah. But what, what did you find in that journey? And what did you find important to portray in the movie? Well, so the core of sex and love addiction with, as with any addiction, is um, finding validation through external things outside of yourself. Yeah. And we go looking in all the wrong places. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very painful. Yeah. Um, but, you know, even through my recovery, finding that the love does begin with you and so going through recovery was a painful but also very enlightening experience of you know learning who I am finding Mm -hmm. out what I like to do what makes me happy Mm -hmm. learning how to love and take care of myself like basic things that Mm -hmm. I didn't even know like even before recovery I hadn't ever bought myself flowers or bought myself candles or took baths and I started doing all those things and I'm like oh this actually feels really good right and it seems so selfish doesn't it I, at yeah, a society level I think we learned that yeah we were taught that oh, don't take care of yourself because that's selfish yeah. or vain or any put others before things. yourself which is Absolutely. totally not the truth because no. you should put yourself first you know like put the oxygen mask before yes. you know because we can't serve others at our best if we don't take care of ourselves. Yeah, we talk a lot about, especially when we're working with women through Tribe of Women, we say yes, say yes to you mm-hmm. first. Like you don't have to say no, just say yes to yourself first. And everything just kind of flows after that because it's, um, you know, like you said, what what, every, what everybody else needs, let them everybody else take care of themselves. Yeah. You take care of you and it'll all work out because you'll be whole yourself. Yeah. And you know, if you have an empty cup, Exactly. How are you going to fill anybody else's? You can't give what you don't have. Exactly. And so part yeah. of that self-care is like the flowers and the candles and the baths, but also mm-hmm. more importantly is like, you know, getting rid of toxic relationships. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, having boundaries, speaking up, like all these really important things that you don't necessarily, you're not taught that. No. Yeah. No. And okay, so this is just... So kismet, because you are, I know that after, you know, we have this interview, you'll look at Tribe of Women and you'll just be like, so you speak tribe, basically. Mm -hmm. So that we definitely, we talk about, you know, first we have to love ourselves before we can love others, how we see other people, how we judge other people. Mm -hmm. And that moves right into relationships, which is where the thick of this movie is. And um, toxic relationships Mm -hmm. and boundaries always come up. And they're actually a big piece of, of what we help people work through because 
of that exact thing. Mm. And, you know, this also young women, and I'm interested mm-hmm. in your opinion on this, we're kind of raised to be nice, right? Yes. Or raised not yeah. to say no, and that is a whole and other topic. And sure you look perfect, and you know, don't bring up anything to make anyone mad, and just yeah. be perfect. Or uncomfortable, and, yeah. or exactly. Yeah. And so that's and so that makes it so much harder for us to have boundaries. Yes. And, and that is one of the things that, you know, just saying, I don't like something, mm. and just leaving it at that. Mm-hmm. Instead, we're expected to explain, oh, or, yes. <laughs> or if we don't find something funny, right. I don't think that's funny. Yeah. Well, and I don't have to tell you why. Yeah. I just don't. Yes. <laughs> so what what were some of those things that you explored in the movies when it came to, in the movie, when it came to relationships and boundaries? Um, well, my character, Joy, um, She's, you know, jumping from relationship to relationship, um, and at some point, uh, she needs to take a look at herself and start working on herself, and that means, you know, stopping with the men, stopping with the sex yeah. and the romance and the texting and the social media and the everything out there, um, and being with herself, yeah. um, because that's where it all starts. And so, during this time of recovery in the movie. She meets, um, it's actually, her sponsor in the program is um, a character named Maddie, played by Melissa Leo, mm-hmm. and she's Joy's sponsor, and um, her brother, she meets her brother, who is John Hawks, mm-hmm. um, and they develop a non-romantic, non-sexual relationship, and I think that's where a lot of the learning is of real intimacy that doesn't involve the sex and the romance and the stuff and just two human beings trying to figure it out. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Mm-hmm. What do you think that in general at large um, we can help? I mean, there are things that we can affect and things that we can't change, sure. but it generally at large in society, what do you think that some of the most important things that people can do to get to that place? You said some things. You already kind of threw out some tips like, just shut everything down mm-hmm. and be with you for a while. Mm-hmm. So what about reentry into those things? What are some healthy ways to engage in social media, to right. engage in those relationships yeah. and to engage? Because yeah. um, we can't all just yeah. be cut off. We, we, right, right, I, right. I would like to live in a hole every once in a yeah, while. Sure. But, yeah. So what are some healthy habits that you think are important to develop? I think um, mindfulness, so, you know, I like to meditate, but that could look like something else for other people, whether it's a walk or journaling or just talking out loud or talking with a friend or a therapist, but I think having some kind of practice where you're able to have that pause in life so that everything becomes a choice, so that when you do pick up the phone and, like, you're going to post a selfie or whatever, it's just like, wait. Am I doing this out of love or am I doing this out of fear and insecurity and all those other things? And it's okay if it is, but just to start being aware of why we do the things we do and being conscious and present in that moment of what we're doing, you know? So when everything becomes a choice, then things can become more about, oh, I'm doing this because it makes me happy and because it's nurturing and loving Mm -hmm. and taking care of myself versus maybe some other things sometimes where it's like, oh, well, maybe that actually is not very kind to myself you know yeah yeah, definitely so when you're in your journey or in the journey of the Mm -hmm. character take your pick (laughs) um so you you probably have a tribe Um, of people that you've collected through through being uh, having healthier relationships so who's in your tribe or even specifically your tribe of women and how are they helping kind of maintain and um all of that self-love that you have going yeah um i actually have two people in my life who are my mentors and um they were miraculously brought into my life about five years ago Mm -hmm. and really saved my life you know i was in a bottom and and you know wanted to kill myself and like they taught me how to love and take care of myself but more importantly i think what i learned from them was the love and the compassion despite of all the things that I thought I should be ashamed of. And so that's what I like to pass on to other people is that compassion and that acceptance and that non-judgmental love and nurturing. And um, so I have a lot of very wonderful men and women in my life who 
you know, know everything about me and love me anyway. And exactly. that's the thing I've learned is that the, the ones that love you will love you and the ones who don't won't. And that's okay. okay. And that's okay. And keep focusing on the ones that do because you don't want to chase the ones that you don't anyway. Exactly. And you're going to get out there and try it forward to other yes, people. Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. Oh, you're awesome. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. I'm so glad that we got to do this Me too. today. I hope we'll get to get to see each other more. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes I need to unplug. Sometimes I've got to reboot. Sometimes I just want to sleep. But I always want to connect with you. Get into Brew Moods, aromatherapy lotions powered by a mindfulness app.